Well, hello, hello, and greetings, friends, and warm, warm welcome to the Black Entrepreneurs Institute show. Uh, today, I am hosting the show all by myself. My name is Damian Johnson. I'm one of the co-founders of the Black Entrepreneurs Institute. And um, on, the, on the second Tuesday of every month, the founders and I, we all agreed that we'll host a show and we'll bring together a teaching. And so um, I'm looking forward to what I have to share with you tonight. So buckle up, strap in, uh, because it's going to be a good ride. Um, so I got to tell you that uh, you're, you're, you're catching me on a day where I am still basking in the glow, uh, the glow of pride from graduating our third uh, BEI bootcamp cohort. We just had graduation on this past Thursday. And let me tell you, my heart is full um, because you know, when we when we look at where we were when we started off a, a little bit over a year ago, to see the 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 dream, the vision come to pass, and to see the impact that we're having, it just warms my heart. You know, uh, Angela and, and and us we joke about the fact that every cohort that we graduated feels like another baby for, for her, and uh, and I think we all collectively share in that um, in in that sense of fulfillment and pride, knowing that. We're helping some of our uh, our entrepreneurs, our boot campers, really start to get traction and get clarity and and be able to move the needle forward. And so, uh, so, so I'll be I'll be sharing in just a few moments about uh, from the subject of the one thing that impacts everything. But you know, because I'm feel so proud about what we've accomplished and so proud of our of our boot campers and the progress that they've made, I thought it would be fun just to invite you into our world like come on in and and take a seat and 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 and, and just kind of take a look at um and hear from uh some of our boot campers to share as they share their thoughts on the experience of having gone through the bei boot camp so i'm going to share uh just a, a short video uh with our with our boot campers sharing their thoughts from the graduation so uh so just bear with me for just a moment here We, we, we are just allowing the grad, graduates congratulations uh, to, to give some reflections on their time. Well, I, I would say uh, first and foremost, thank you uh, to each of the founders. And um, so happy that I had the opportunity to participate in the course. Um, I can see a lot of growth uh, from myself. Uh, from the beginning of the class and, and now getting getting to this point, so it's been a very enjoyable experience and I'm happy to have the opportunity to observe. I know with uh, Dr. Helen, um, there were a few times when uh, we were supposed to be doing presentations together and I was very fortunate to go second after you went. So thank you for uh, trailblazing and, and, and getting some of that feedback so I could learn uh, kind of what it is that they were looking for a little bit more. I'm, I'm sorry, that's just kind of how it went, but I appreciate it nonetheless. So it's it's been a very good experience. I'm looking forward to continuing to work with each of you um, with this, uh, I guess, with this next group uh, that I'm looking forward to uh, learning more about. So here I'm retired from work of other people. And so I was kind of looking at my work as gravy. Like, OK, if I make a little extra, I'll make a little extra, you know, not really taking it to a business, looking at it from a business standpoint and from a business to grow, you know, um, beyond me. And so this really gave me that, um, that vision, you know, and it took me back. I'm looking at all your faces. I know I'm a lot older than most of y'all, but it took me back to the seventies when, um, you know, I studied Napoleon Hill and, um, Andrew Carnegie and those, uh, principles of, uh, of, uh, you know, the power of belief, the power of positive thinking, the power of, of, of consistency and effort. And so it really brought all of that into focus with me as it relates to my business. Um, I thought it was great because the four of you are all, you all bring a different flavor to the table and a different persona. And, uh, um, you know, and, and it's a it's a good balance between y'all. And um, 
you, you know, know, and hearing your stories, stories and also working with the other people in the group, it was really, um, it's very uplifting because sometimes if you, you know, I work solo that you don't really have anybody to bounce ideas off or even to hear other thoughts and ideas that will stimulate your own thinking. So thank you. It was very, very good. I look forward to work with y'all in Emerald. I like to elevate the mindset and the money. So I'm, you've got the mindset charged. Now we focus on the money. Um, so my name is Terry. So I haven't met many of you, but um, I've actually connected with a few of you through Facebook, even though we've never actually met. Um, so I just want to just kind of share that, similar to what Edward mentioned about family, um, sometimes I have to remind myself that I haven't actually physically met any of the people on the screen. <laughs> Because you know, how during the course of the week, I'm like, yeah, I speak to my wife, I'm like, yeah, me and Edward were talking. Like, yeah, but guess what? Cedric was saying this evening, oh, yeah, me and Angela met, we were talking, and it's literally as though you know, these are people that I see every day at work, or we're just hanging out, and, and we're literally all over the place. And by the way, you may hear from the accent, I'm originally from the UK, but I'm currently living in Canada, so yeah, I'm not crazy. <laughs> So I, I'm the one that brings the, the international flavor to, to me. So, um, but no, you know, in all seriousness, I think one of the real benefits has been just the availability of, of each of the mentors. You know, I, I think the last couple of weeks I've met with Cedric, I met with Angela multiple times and text back and forth with Damien about the certification and it's just so free flowing, you know. Edward was in my, my group session earlier on today. We're going to meet tomorrow morning. And it just doesn't feel like this is, you know, a, a business kind of group. It's just literally just, just family. And everyone is so invested in each other. Um, seeing each other's wins and successes, you know, just seeing what everyone's doing and being able to support one another and congratulate one another. And I, I, I really can barely remember what life was like before we were doing this um so i don't know what the future holds in terms of how ei will grow but i know that as long as i'm going to be in business I'm, I'm sure i'll still be a part of this so i'm looking forward to meeting all of you in different ways and hoping for opportunities to collaborate and to share and encourage and just continue this journey together so congratulations and i look forward to what you in the future Yeah, so so there you have it. You got to hear from some of our boot camp graduates, and that was just from this past Thursday. And I got to tell you, um, you know, it's one thing that when when uh, you know we pat ourselves on the back and we say we're doing meaningful work, but it's another thing when you hear uh, testimonials from from people that have experienced the journey. So we're excited about that because we actually have just opened up enrollment for our third cohort. I'll talk a little bit more, I'm sorry, our fourth cohort, that was number three. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, towards the end of the show, but, but here, here's what I know. Um, uh, enrollment is open and uh, we're doing something really special because up until tomorrow, you can actually enroll and receive 30% off. So we're doing 30% off through the 10th of of, uh, of March and so uh, so if you are looking to uh, to really be able to get traction in your business uh, then you may actually want to come and consider uh, joining the the next cohort that we are going to launch It's going to kick off in the first week of April and uh, every cohort we we see massive improvement because as we grow and we get better uh, we share everything that we have so so today, uh, you guys have got me by myself, and I want to share a, a, a talk with you that is a talk that I did at a summit uh, in January, and I, I really did receive rave reviews about it. And so I, I wanted, I thought, well, you know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have an opportunity to share, then I want to share something that will that will add value. Uh, to, to you. And so what I want to talk about today is really the one thing that impacts everything, the one thing that impacts everything. And so 
you know, uh, the best uh, the best definition that I have heard for entrepreneurship actually comes from a guest that we've had on the show. Uh, his name is Marcus Davis. And what Marcus Davis said is that uh, his definition of entrepreneurship is that um, uh, entrepreneurship is filling a void in the marketplace that the marketplace is calling for consciously or subconsciously. And he says that consciously or subconsciously. I've never heard that before. But the reason he says that is because sometimes the marketplace knows what it wants and it's for and the entrepreneurs uh, the entrepreneur agrees and moves forward for that uh, to fill that void. And then sometimes the marketplace does not know what it wants, and it, the entrepreneur is responsible for uh, thinking about that, dreaming about that, and then bringing that vision to pass. And so I just thought it would be it would be um, it would be good to sort of anchor that awareness because. The Black Entrepreneurs Institute, we're all about elevating the mindset and the money of, of black and minority entrepreneurs. And so, so the topic that I want to talk about today is the one thing that impacts everything. The one thing that impacts everything. So, um, so here, here, here is, here's where we're, we're going to go today. Okay. Now, um, I think that it is extremely important that we that we understand that as entrepreneurs we are here to find opportunities to create unique solutions and so the topic that i'm going to be talking about today is the topic of focus and so i've coined this particular definition that, that as you look at this through the lens of being an entrepreneur that you are here to find opportunities to create unique solutions because people pay when you can solve their problems. And so your product or your service, it must be a solution to a problem. And the more you need the solution, the more impact that you can make. But in order for you to be able to do that, it does require that you focus. And you know what I've discovered along the journey, because really what I'm sharing today, I'm sharing really from the journey that I have personally been on, because um, I know what it's like to have something in, in, in my head and have something in my heart, uh, but be unable to focus to bring that forward. And one of my favorite books is when I was on the journey to figure out how to really dial in my focus is The War of Art. And, and the author is Stephen Pressfield. Now, here, here is what, uh, here's what Stephen Pressfield says. He says that there is a secret that real writers know that wannabe writers don't. And the secret is this. It's not the writing that is hard. What's hard is sitting down to write. And I think that's so applicable because when you are trying to bring a, a business to life, uh, sometimes you can find that, that, that you are not always in that space where you're sitting down to get the work done. You have a dream in your head, a dream in your heart, but the, you know, the dream doesn't come to life unless you can sit down and get the work done. And sitting down and getting the work done, my friends, requires focus. You know, one of my favorite stories is the story of, of Mahatma Gandhi, which essentially says that, you know, he spoke to parliament for, for two hours without notes. And afterwards, a reporter asked Gandhi's assistant, how could Gandhi speak for two hours and have no notes? And here's what the assistant replied. He said that, you don't understand Gandhi. You see what he thinks is what he feels, what he feels is what he says, and what he says is what he does. All are the same. He does not need notes. And, and see, here, here's the key point here. here, here here's the key learning from that. The key, lot, the key thought here is that when values and thoughts and feelings and actions are all in alignment, that's when a person becomes really focused and their character is strengthened in that process because it they become fully congruent. They, they are able to successfully lead themselves and lead others. And so as an entrepreneur, we should be striving for praxis, right? Which is the integration of, of, of knowledge, thoughts, belief, and action. And so that's, that's what we want to talk about today. Now, 
this topic is really, really personal to me because, you know, years ago, um, I remember, uh, I remember being in investment banking and I felt like a square peg in a round hole. I remember that I would have to spend hours and hours really just uh, uh, going through stacks and stacks of reports and crunching numbers and putting together credit packages for multi-million dollar deals. And it was driving me nuts. And so I decided that, you know what, I need to get out of here. I want to have, I feel like I am trapped. Uh, and maybe, maybe as you're listening to this, maybe you're in a corporate job and maybe you feel stuck because here's what I know. There's a difference between who you are and what you do. What you do for, for a living is different than who you are as a person. And so one of the one of the draws and the pulls of entrepreneurship is the idea of having flexibility. It's the idea of being able to command your own time, to live your own life on your terms. And so after years of being in investment banking, I said, you know what, I'm gonna walk away from this. I'm gonna make a run. I am heading for the light. And you know what? I, I, I walked away from, from, from that job and uh and so now uh i had time i had my time back i had to do anything that i wanted right but you know what i discovered is that i would wake up in the morning and by the time i could blink it was afternoon and then by the time i could blink again it was evening and one day turned to two days and two days turned to a week and then you know a month went by and i was not getting anything done and what i did not realize is that the, the problem for me was that I needed structure. And I thought that just, just being able to get away from a job that I was not enjoying would have been enough, but I didn't re but what I lacked was I lacked structure in my life. And so what I didn't understand at that time was that structure equals freedom. And maybe as you consider your entrepreneurial journey, you're thinking, hey, you know, I want to be able to have freedom and I want to have time flow. But here's what I'm going to tell you. In order, yes, you need to have, yes, you will have freedom and yes, you will have time flow, but you need to have structure because without structure, it is very difficult to focus. All of us want to be able to live a life of, of, of meaning and a life of fulfillment, but we underestimate the amount of work it will take and the amount of focus that is necessary to bring that forward. So my friends, the one thing that impacts everything as you are embarking upon your entrepreneurial journey, the one thing that impacts everything is your ability to focus. So here, 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 is, here is what I, I want you to know, because uh, this talk that I'm sharing is for you. This is, I want to share with you some ways that you know that this talk is for you. So, so this talk is for you if, you if you have a lot to do, but you find that more often than not, more often than you would like to admit, your days are getting away from you. This talk is for you if you find yourself procrastinating on the important things and then waiting until the pressure of the deadline forces you to get it done at the last minute. This talk is for you if you feel, if you struggle with the feeling of letting yourself down because what you produce may be good enough for some, but deep down on the inside, you know that you aren't giving your very best effort. Matter of fact, if, if any of these resonate with you, I would love for you to just make a comment in the chat. Let me know if this is hitting home. Um, and by the way, so, so this talk is also for you. If you find yourself starting and stopping, haunted by the thought of completing your incompletes. And finally, this talk is for you. If you have a lot to do, but you consistently struggle to maintain consistent momentum uh, to get the work done, okay? Now, one of the things that I discovered in my journey, because remember, for this, I am really sharing from my, my own journey, my own life, is that, uh, is, is that if, if you are going to, to bring your genius to the marketplace, if you're going to build a successful business, then it's important that you understand that you must have traction, right? So being focused means having traction. And when I say traction, what I'm talking about specifically is behavior that moves us closer towards our goals, right? Now, the opposite of traction is distraction. And distraction is really defined as any behavior that moves us away 
from our goals. Now, what's interesting to note is that, uh, that all distractions are prompted by a trigger. Some are internal triggers and some are external triggers. An example of an internal trigger might be like, say, when your stomach is growling, it triggers you to go and find something to eat, right? We all know that. And an example of an external trigger could be the ping from your cell phone, right? So that the, And that triggers you to go check your email or to read a text message. But here's the thing that you have to understand. Whether you are prompted by an internal trigger or an external trigger, the resulting action that you take is either in alignment with your goals, which is traction, or it is not in alignment with your goals, which is distraction. Now, the process of consistently responding to the triggers that distract you is really what leads to an unproductive life. And none of us want that. And as an entrepreneur, you have to be highly productive because here's what I can tell you from my own journey is that you are going to have to put in more than 40 hours a week. You are going to have to work, hard, especially when you are just starting off and you are trying to move the needle and you're really trying to get some momentum, right? And so, so we want to make sure that we're not consistently responding to things that distract us and to the triggers that distract us because you don't want to have that feeling where you're continuing to let yourself down. You're not living into your, your purpose. You're not manifesting your potential. You're not making progress where you're setting goals, but you never reach them, where you have dreams and desires, but they stay in your head and they never get lived out. Now, in the journey to sort of overcome the lack of focus that I have struggled with in my life, um, I, I, I have read many, many books uh, to learn what to do. And there's one book in particular that was really, really helpful to me. And it's a book by an author named Nir Eyal. Um, and that book is called Indistractable. And in that book, here, here is what he, he, he points out, that the, reach, the research shows that the drive to relieve discomfort is the root cause of all our behavior. So, you know, motivation, for example, um, you know, may, maybe to, to, to accomplish a goal is actually less about rewards and punishments. And it's more about avoiding discomfort. And I did not know that. See, so what that really means is that distraction is almost always an attempt to escape some uncomfortable reality. Let me give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. So, so, so one example of a, of, a, of a discomfort that you might be trying to escape is, is the fear of not being good enough. That is commonly referred to as imposter syndrome. And so rather than sitting down to do the work that you're supposed to do, it's easier to, 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 to pick up your cell phone and to scroll through social media and spend time doing likes and making comments because really what you are struggling with is, is, is you don't feel good enough. You don't feel worthy. And so it's easy to jump off into distractions and not get the work done. Another example of a discomfort that we often try to avoid is, is, is uncertainty, uh, you know, or, or, or the unknown. So when, when you're not sure about what you need to do, then it's easier to, to go off into something that gives you a momentary relief from the anxiety that can happen when you're not sure where you're going. Sometimes that discomfort can look like when you're, can look like tasks that you have to do that are challenging. And so because it's a challenging task, you might find it easier to just watch TV or go on a Netflix binge rather than sitting down and doing the work and staying focused. Or sometimes it could be work that is actually time consuming. And so because, that, because of that, because of the pressure of the, of the weight of the work and the, and the length it's going to take, sometimes you'll find yourself doing things that are less urgent, less important, and not doing the meaningful work. Now, these are just a few examples that, that I'm giving you, but I'm really interested to hear what are some of the examples as you listen to this and you reflect on your own life and the things that cause you to be distracted, what do you think are some of the, uh, some of the, the, some of the discomfort that you are trying to escape? You know, for me, uh, what I discovered was that when I engage in distraction, nine times out of 10, it usually is because I'm unclear about what I should be doing next, right? And the uncertainty makes me uncomfortable. And to avoid that feeling, sometimes I will engage in, sometimes I welcome the distraction. Please come and distract me, right? And so what I wanted to do with our time today is I want to give you three 
three strategies, three principles that will help you to focus so you can get your work done. Because remember, as entrepreneurs, we need to find opportunities to create unique solutions. But that requires that we sit down and get that work done. Sit down and do the thinking. Sit down and do the planning. Sit down and do the work. Now, the first principle I want to share with you is that we need to know our rhythms of maximum effectiveness, right? Um, I call this knowing your focus friendly window, you know? So here's, here's a question I want to ask you. Have you really sat back to think through what time of the day are you most effective? What point in the day are you able to, to do the work, to work the longest with the least amount of interruption? And so if, if you're going to really be, be focused, then you have to know when the time of day that's most conducive for you to get your work done. And that's when you need to plan to do your work. Now, the second principle is that this is really important that you have to have a criteria for how you choose to spend your time. Now, for me, I, I sort of refer to this as setting time boundaries, because I think it's important that, that as an entrepreneur, you have to make decisions around what is most important to you. So how do your values show up in your life? I think it's really important that, that, you, are, that, you, are, um, that you have a criteria for how you choose to spend your time, and that criteria should be in full alignment with your values. You all know the saying that you can tell what a person values by looking at two things, how they spend their money and where they spend their time, right? And so what I'm suggesting here for you as a very practical strategies is that you have to add your non-negotiables to your calendar first because all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, okay? So you want to make sure that you prioritize and that you schedule your values. So, so here's what this could actually look like. Uh, it could mean that you, you plan time to nurture meaningful relationships in your life. For me, you know, I've, I've got four kids. Three of them are still in the home. They're little and I value time with my family. And so for me, it's very easy for me to decide that I'm going to have to set some boundaries. So for me, I don't take any calls before nine o'clock for the most part, right? Uh, because that morning time where we're having breakfast and we're getting the kids ready and we're spending time uh, is very, very important for me, especially when we're, we're sitting down and doing breakfast together. You know, you might, for example, also value health and wellness because if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you don't have a healthy body, uh, there's very little that you're going to accomplish. So, so, so protecting time uh, to, to, to exercise and to work out and, and setting aside time for that could be really important for you. So that may be a value, right? Um, but how about setting aside time to actually invest in yourself? Right. And that could look like working with a coach or it might be as simple as reading a book or even listening to a podcast. But we have to have time for self growth and self development. So the, the, what I'm what I'm telling you is that you really need to make sure that you are making that your your values are in alignment and that you have a criteria for what actually gets your time. If you don't have values and you don't and you don't set priorities and boundaries around your values, how do you know what to say yes to and how do you know what to say no to? You know, so there also is time and this is so important that, that we have to set aside time for planning the work that we need to do. Having that reflection time to figure out what's working and what's not working and who you need to call and, and what you need to do to move your business forward. These are some things that I think as an entrepreneur should absolutely be on your calendar and things that you should be focusing on. Now, so, so, so we've talked about knowing uh, your rhythm of maximum effectiveness. We've talked about having a criteria for how you choose to spend your time. And the third point that I want to share with you is that you, you seize and command your time by budgeting it, budgeting it far in advance. So what this means is having a plan. It means having a calendar. It means living according to the calendar. Let me let me give you an example, right? Um, so 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 my wife used to be a, a middle school teacher, right? I'm sorry, a middle school principal. Uh oh, <laughs> don't get me in trouble. Don't tell her I said that. 
So she used to be a middle school principal. And um, early in that journey, she was always bringing work home with her and she was just burnt to a crispy fry. And so we sat down and we said, no, we've got to make some changes here because this is just not working for our life. And so we sat down and we, and, and we talked through um, her really sort of setting aside time for specific things and budgeting those things far in advance, right? So there were times where, where she would respond to email, times where she would uh, um, schedule parent meetings, time when she would meet with teachers. But essentially, she established a plan for when things should happen to help her manage her day. So, so, so again, these three principles are what I've discovered that helped me to maintain focus so I can have traction and move towards my goals. So let me give you two really helpful practices along these lines. Uh, the first one is, is time blocking. Now, this goes in, in, in tandem with what I shared about in, in, in just a few moments ago about um, knowing, knowing um, your rhythm of maximum effective. You should be doing your best work when you are at your best and you should be protecting that time. So when you are time blocking, you're setting aside a period of time to do the work. So for, for me, that could look like, it could look like two hours in the morning where I'm going to focus on creating content, writing topics to teach about. Uh, it could be focused, you know, two hours in the morning where I'm focused on building uh, strategies around sales and, and marketing. But you have to do your best work when you are at your best. And that means that whatever your focus friendly window is, you need to block that time and do the work in that time. Now, this next strategy, this next practice I want to share with you is, is what I use inside of the time blocks that I set up to, to work. Now, this is called the Pomodoro Technique. And the, Pomo, the Pomodoro Technique really um, helps you to create rhythms of work and rest, work and rest, because you can only concentrate for so long. And so for me, uh, I'm at my best early in the morning, right? Uh, when the family is sleeping, when the house is quiet, I get up really, really early. And that's when I get some of my best ideas and I get my work done. Now, the classic version of the Pomodoro technique is where you set aside 25 minutes to work, five minutes to rest, 25 minutes on, five minute break, 25 minute on, five minute break. But but here is what I discovered is that you really have to take this and and uh, and modify it as you start to learn your rhythms of maximum effectiveness. So for me, when I block time, um, I, when I set when I'm working inside of a time block, what I do is I use the Pomodoro technique. And for me, I do 42 minutes, approximately 40, 42 minutes of work and then I take about a 20 minute break. So 18, 20 minutes is what I do because I find that I can focus and I can concentrate for about 42 minutes and get work done, but then I need a break. And so this, what this does for me, and this is probably what it will do for you too, because the beauty of this is that um, when you use the Pomodoro technique, it allows you to get into the flow state, right? now. Some of you may not know what I mean when I say flow state. Um, this is what people refer to when they say they're in the zone, right? When you are fully immersed in an activity. So a flow state is essentially a mental state in which a person, uh, while doing some activity, feels energized. They're focused. They're deeply involved in the work and they're experiencing joy while in the process of the activity. So I would encourage you to use time blocks, but also inside of those time blocks, Implement the Pomodoro technique where you have a rhythm of work and a rhythm of rest and, and, and see if that doesn't help you to get into that flow state where the ideas are coming, the, you're clicking on all cylinders and you are, you are getting your work done. Now, I have created a resource that I, I want to give to you. And, uh, and if you'll just go to bit.ly forward slash focus freebie, you'll be able to pick up that, uh, that resource and use it uh, to, to, to see when you are at your most effective times, you know, your rhythm of maximum effectiveness, and you can be able to start capturing your focus because without focus, nothing gets done. Now, the reason why all of this is important is, is, is simply this. We exist and we operate in the context of time. 
right? We, 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 we operate in time and, and we always are in the ever present now, right? You can't do anything about the past. The future is not here yet. So we live in the now. And so I, I thought it would be helpful to share with you something that I came across in my studies. And I, and I really, I really kind of look at this as the five economic principles of time. And so all of this that I'm sharing is important because, because in order for you to get work done, uh, you have to focus. And if you don't focus, what happens is that your time escapes you. So I want to share with you five economic principles of time. Principle number one simply says that there is uh, that, that small amounts of time invested consistently yields a great return. Now, uh, my friend and mentor, Dr. John Maxwell, says that there's a compounding effect to consistency. And that is absolutely true. Think about it from the standpoint of, of, of exercise, right? So, so let's say you go to the gym. I go to a boot camp. Uh, I try to get in three to five days a week. Sometimes I'm better, sometimes I'm not. But when I'm, when I'm, when I'm really uh, sort of dialed in, I, I try to get in for five days, right? And uh, what I've discovered is that in the process of working out, like I don't get all the results that I want to see just by going to the gym for one 40 minute session. So, but over the process of time, by consistently getting up early and going to the gym and working out day in, day out, day in, day out, eventually I start to see the muscles start to peak out, the six pack starts to form. And not that I have a six pack right now, but <laughs> but there have been times, this is my experience. And, and you know this to be true too, that anything you're working on, if you invest a small amount of time and you do it consistently, you will get a good return. Now, the second principle is that this is really important. There is no immediate consequence for wasting time. And this is what is so deceptive about it. Because when you are wasting time, when you're caught up in distraction, it doesn't necessarily hurt in the moment. Matter of fact, it might feel good in the, in the moment. You might have a sense of fulfillment. And so the, the, so the deception in that is that it doesn't hurt when you're wasting time. Right. So there's not an immediate consequence. But here is where it all sort of comes to bear in principle number three, that neglect has a cumulative value. You keep wasting time. You keep engaging in distracting behaviors. You keep on engaging in bad habits. Then you know what? It adds up over time. Right. It all adds up. And, and, and here here is the thing that, that we all have to understand. So so so, for example, if I if I decide to skip out on going to the, the gym today, it's not really going to matter. Right. Not not into not in this one installment. It's not going to make that much difference. But over the process of time, if I continue to neglect my health and neglect my wellness, and if you continue to neglect sitting down and getting the work done, sitting down and focus and fighting back distractions, it adds up. Now, here's the thing. When I learned this principle number four, it really kind of hit me dead in the eye. And it says that there is no benefit to the urgent things that we allow to interrupt the important things. There is no cumulative value. So let me explain this. So let's say I decide that instead of going to the gym, I'm going to sleep in. And you were to ask me, well, Damien, you know, um, what what was the value of the of of you sleeping in? It it doesn't doesn't add up. So every time I get up, every time I I miss out and and I decide not to do something that I should do, there is no benefit to that. When I and if I were to add up the value that you could assign that you might assign to what you did instead of doing the thing that you knew that you know you should do it doesn't add up to anything and so we have to realize that the time that is wasted is is time that we cannot get back and this is where the fifth economic principle of time comes into play it says that you cannot make up for lost time None of us can make up for lost time. And so as entrepreneurs, the one thing that changes everything is that we must focus. Focus is critical if we're going to bring our goals forward, if we're going to do work that matters, if we're going to, to, to bring to the market the solutions that it's calling for consciously or subconsciously, as Marcus Davis said, it requires that we are able to, to, to focus. 
and and you know and and I really hope that that this that this has helped you so far. This message is helping you because if, if you're going to bring your genius forward, then it's going to require that you sit down and do the work and sit down and focus, that you are working when you are at your best, that you're bringing your genius forward, that you're monetizing the genius that is within you because the you being a business owner, you bringing your genius to the marketplace is absolutely critical if you are going to make your mark on the world. And so I wanna close by just sharing with you a video that I found really, really, um, really inspiring and so um so if you'll just uh, uh just watch this and i i think you'll understand very quickly why i'm sharing this video none of us wake up and say today is the day i destroy my life what we do is we make these teeny tiny decisions all day long we don't really it all day long, these tiny decisions that take you so far off track. And then you wake up like I did, and you look at your life, and you think, how the hell did I get here? And you have no idea. It has never been so easy to spend the best hours of your days chasing distractions. You can be distracted, or you can get epic work done. You can't do it. Some people, they can't focus. Anymore. The victim is addicted to distraction. The leader is monomaniacally focused on a few things. So they do not dilute the bandwidth of their focus, their energy, and their attention. I'm suggesting to you, you don't build a wide life and you don't build a wide career, but you go really, really deep. You got to stay in your lane. You got to keep the main thing, the main thing. You got to stay on your mission and not be distracted. You know what you have to do. You pay to be where you need to be and don't let anybody distract you from getting your job done. You're paid for what you do and for what you produce and not for what you're distracted from doing. Divorce yourself from her. Get serious about this. This is your game. This is your life. And before you know it, you will be at the end. We all know that life goes by in a way. Start the process of breaking your addiction to distraction today. Think about where you spend your time. Is it being wasted or is it being utilized? Handle the stuff in front of you and find every area of your life you're just like, gosh, I spend a lot of time doing this stupid stuff and get rid of it. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed that teaching today, my friends. Remember, the one thing that changes everything is your ability to focus. So stay focused on bringing your solutions to the markets. Find opportunities to create unique solutions and bring your genius to the marketplace because the world needs you. So Hopefully you've enjoyed that teaching. Um, I've enjoyed <laughs> delivering it. And um, and here's what I wanna tell you guys. For the last few minutes, I just wanna let you know that in the Black Entrepreneurs Institute, uh, we really, really wanna help black and minority entrepreneurs, but all entrepreneurs, because we don't exclude anyone, right? But that's just our niche. And uh, our, our boot camp, as I shared with you, is, is open for enrollment now. And uh, we'd love to have you come on in. And so, so the link to enroll in the boot camp, and we're doing 30% off, is blackentrepreneurinstitute.com forward slash enroll, blackentrepreneurinstitute forward slash enroll. Now, here's, here's, what, here's what, I, what you need to, to know about the boot camp. One of the things that differentiates what we do from many other programs out there, yes, we bring fantastic content, relevant content that you can use, but the game changing factor for all of our boot campers will tell you is that we bring practical application. So we do a teaching lesson and then that very same week, you you know you you have to do an assignment you have to apply what you're learning and so we take it through an eight week set of modules really designed to give you the solid foundation to be able to not only launch but to be able to scale your business the journey begins with us covering 
uh, uh, building a solid foundation, the building blocks of you having a legal entity. One of the things that we saw when the pandemic first hit is that many entrepreneurs were, were not able to take advantage of the assistance that was available because they, they did not have their business properly documented as a legal entity. So in the first module, we cover laying a solid foundation, and that includes having a business plan. I am shocked at how many entrepreneurs set out to launch a business with no game plan. And that's not for success. And so, so we, we encourage all of our team members to all of our, our boot campers to write a business plan, even if it's just a one page business plan, thinking necessary to, to create a business plan is really important. Once we get and then once we get through that, the next module we cover is about finding your niche, because you have to have a, a, a focal point for who you are trying to serve. And discovering that is really important so that you can begin to craft your marketing message to speak to that audience. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs have this sort of this 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 faulty thinking that says that I'm here to help everyone and my product or my service is for everyone. Well, that may be true, but when you speak to everyone, you actually speak to no one. And so we help them to discover and narrow down their needs so that they can start to really begin to attract the people that need their service or need their product. Then from there, we talked about uh, creating a brand, right? Because a brand is more than a logo, my friends. It's more than a logo. And so, so we, we walk them through that process. And then we talk about moving the comma, creating macro streams of income and micro streams of income, because we want you to actually bring your product to the marketplace, but that means you've got to do the work. And so remember, for every teaching that we do, there is a practical application session. So during the eight weeks, there's teaching, and then there is the application. You're going to do the actual work. And then from there, we move on to getting comfortable with sales. Now, I have said this over and over and over, and if you have been with us for any length of time, you have heard me say this, that as an entrepreneur, you are in the business of sales. Let me, let me, let me make sure that you, you all are hearing me. Look, come, come, come closer, lean in with me, right? If you are looking to build a business, you are in sales. And so you cannot afford to be uncomfortable and have these negative paradigms around what selling means. And you may have had some bad experiences before, but and, and that may have jaded your perspective when it comes to sales. But unless you sell your product or your service, how do you get paid? And so sales is a really critical component to every business. That's what makes the world go around. And, and, and so, so we have a module where you have to get comfortable with sales. And then the practical application is that you have to come ready to sell your product and service. Now, beyond that, one of the things that is really, really important for all entrepreneurs is the ability to negotiate. And so we have a teaching on negotiation where we give you practical skills and, and, and amazing teaching to help you learn the fundamentals of posturing yourself to be able to, to, to win business. And then guess what? Later that week, there's a session where you have to exit, you have to, you go through a negotiation simulation. And so uh, many of our boot campers will tell you that uh, these sessions have stretched them because at the end of the day, these are practical things that you need to have in your tool belt if you're going to be successful as a business owner. We also then talk about the pitfalls of entrepreneurship because as an entrepreneur, you have to be aware that there's some things that can throw you off. And at the end of the day, we don't want anybody leaving our boot camp unprepared for the for for the twists and the turns and the curveballs that will likely pop up and to know how to navigate those things. And so so during the boot camp, it's eight weeks, it's 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 intense, but I promise you, when you come away from that boot camp, you are going to come away ready to win and re and feeling like an entrepreneur, not not just having a side hustle. And here is what I will tell you finally as I, as I wrap up our time together, and thank you for leaning in and listening in here, is that at the BEI, we are a family. If you listen to what our boot camper said at the, in the video that I played in the very beginning, you know that 
this is more than just a business to us. This is our heart. This is our passion. And we are creating a community of support here. It's a family here. And so we want you to be a part of our family. And so the link is on the screen. You have until tomorrow, the, the March 10, to be able to get the 30% off. So don't overthink it. Many of you have been watching us for a while. We're here to stay come and join the boot camp. come and join the BEI family because we want to help you elevate your mindset and elevate your money. And so I'm grateful for the time that we've had today. As always, you know, we want to say thank you to, to Paul for, uh, for giving us this platform to share with the Empowered Living community. We're all members of the Empowered Living community. And if you're out there and you haven't gotten the success that you desire, if you haven't if you haven't been able to move the needle as much as you know you have the potential to do, then try something different and come and join our boot camp. So we want you to stay tuned. Um, thanks for the time. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting us by watching our show. Come join the boot camp. But we want you to stay tuned because the Empowered Living Candle is coming up next, where we hold a space for. It's coming up at, uh, at uh, in thirty minutes, and we hold a space for peace, love, and hope in the world. Thanks for joining us. Here from the Black Entrepreneurs Institute, my name is Damian Johnson, and we, 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 we love you, we believe in you, and we want to see you elevate your mindset and elevate your money.